All right, everybody, welcome to Unscripted 101. I have a very special guest, and we actually just put this together in about one minute. <laughs> this, so my guest today is Mr. Gage Keys. Um, man, what an honor to have you on. Um, so why don't you introduce yourself, man? Tell us a little bit about you, and uh, we'll go from there. Um, I'm Gage Keys. Uh, I play football at the University of Minnesota. I play D-line. I'm a freshman, and I graduated from Hillary Davidson High School this past year, so... I've lived in Ohio basically my whole life, and this is my first time like moving out of state and everything. So, yeah. very cool. So, um, all right, I don't know where to, I don't even know where to start, man. Um, let's start with. Uh, so, I had Coach Congrove on last week, and uh, we talked about 2018, 2019. Just real quick, man, can you just talk about that season? What a what a special ride that was with that team. Oh, it was amazing. Those are some of the best times still to this day. That was probably one of the most fun teams I've played on. Um, we just had a lot of chemistry, not only like on the court, but also off the court. We were always hanging out and doing stuff. So that was one of my favorite years of high school for sure. And I've had the benefit of, uh, this is going to make you feel, you know, whatever. I I've had the benefit of watching you grow up, man. I remember just watching you from a little guy all the way up. And, uh, and, and uh, you know, it, it was amazing to watch you progress every year. You know, you were the one, we talked about that on the podcast, um, all 10 seniors, you know, and then two, two underclassmen, you were the one underclassman end up starting for that team and had a massive impact. I mean, massive impact. That team's not the team that they were, you know, without the contributions that you made. So um, talk a little bit about um, when you, so, so you, you played a multi, you were a multi-sport athlete. You, you probably had opportunities to play basketball. So what, uh, just talk a little bit about growing up playing two sports and then, you know, some of that was influenced by your dad. We'll ask, we'll talk about that in a second, but talk about playing multi-sports growing up. What was that like? Um, it was fun. It was always, you were always busy, always had something to do, something to look forward to. But for me growing up, it was always basketball. Like basketball was my favorite sport. I like, I liked it first, I guess I would say. And I dedicated most of my time to it. Actually, I never really like started focusing on football until junior year going into senior year of high school because like all the college opportunities and whatnot. But growing up, it was always basketball, AAU throughout the summer. I would train all year round with the trainer. And yeah, I just would work out. Basketball was the main thing. Um, when I was younger, I played baseball too. And I kind of got out of that as the basketball AAU stuff took over. I started just like focusing on that basketball more. I was always in football though, and I always enjoyed it. It was always fun. Um, I always played on the team, but younger, I mean, like middle school and elementary school, I was never like one of the better football players. I was always pretty good at basketball, like one of the better players on the team. But it wasn't until like high school when I really started like getting better at football because I like started focusing on it more than I would say. So and you were you were always the tall kid, right? Like and I think most of most of the 2018, 2019 Hillier Davidson basketball team were the tall kids growing up. Um, so in a way, you dominated just by being tall, right? Yeah. So. What, at what point did you decide, like, and, and so when did, when did you find that it, it went from being just a tall kid on the floor that was easy to all of a sudden the game started to get hard? And you said you work with a personal trainer. Like, at what point did you decide, all right, I got to really commit myself to getting better and not just being tall? Um, it was so middle school, I remember, like, so all up to, like, seventh grade, I, would, I was taller and, like, I could just do whatever. But then as kids started, like, getting a little bigger and that wasn't the easy, that wasn't the case, like, middle school, they played defense. Like, coaches really teach you, like, an AAU, sometimes a defense suspect, especially as yeah. young kids. Like, you're not a lot of defense is being taught. So as the defense started to get better and everything, I was like, all right, I need to be able to, like, handle the ball a little bit to, like, shoot mid-range, all that. So I got with this trainer, um, Paul Jackson. He played at St. Charles, and I was he was also my AAU coach for all higher ed. So every summer, like, we would get in the gym every day, two, three hours every day. I'd just go over every day and get better. And I think through from seventh to eighth grade, I got a lot better. And then once I got to high school, I kind of realized, yeah, you can't just be – like, you can't, you can't play at the same level you're playing at. You need to elevate your game in all areas. So that's really the times that I – I got focused and got a lot better. And correct me if I'm wrong, Gage. You you started varsity as a sophomore, yeah. or no? Or, or or you were at least on? Were you varsity as a freshman? Yeah, I was. I was on the team. I didn't play as much as I did uh, sophomore and junior year. Sophomore and junior year, and then and then so that kind of leads us. Um, well, first of all, Gage and I talked here a minute ago, and and I'm so thankful for his time. He's 
he's a student athlete. I, he doesn't have to do this for me. And he was kind enough to come on. So for anybody listening, understand that uh, Gage is coming on and, and um, I don't want to be the guy to put any NCAA team in a violation. So um, I understand there's, there's some very fine lines that we need to walk. So I've already asked or told Gage, if there's anything he can't answer, he just says pass because the last thing I want to do is put Minnesota in any kind of trouble. And um, so let's transition. You said, um, you know, football wasn't your, your A sport. And so, well, let me ask you this before we go to that. Were you recruited for basketball at any point? Um, not extensively. I mean, compared to football, it wasn't even close, honestly. And a lot of like smaller schools hit up, like would hit up my parents and like, but the, also the big football schools are hitting me up too. So like, I don't think they wanted me to like waste my opportunity that I had in football. So we didn't really like talk about a lot of those options as much, which kind of makes sense because it ended up working out perfectly. So. And that's good. Yeah. That, that, that's what you want, right? You don't want to just be somewhere just for the scholarship as nice as they are. Right. Um, so, so at what point was the shift? When, when did the shift come that you said, you know what, I'm going football. I'm not doing basketball. When was that moment for you? So junior going into junior year, well, sophomore year I had gotten recruited, but it wasn't like anything like super serious. Then I remember junior year after the second game, it was that like September 1st day where the coaches can start texting you. And I was like with my friends after the game, it was on a Friday, we were all hanging out my basement and then I get a text from Ohio State coach uh coaches at Minnesota coaches uh like all all types of schools and I'm just like my phone's getting blown up and I'm like wow like it just like hit me I was like I could really like do something with this and like I've been putting it off because I like haven't really like always enjoyed it but I've been putting it off but like I was like okay there's some potential here and then that junior season like at practices after that I feel like I started to focus more and then I started getting better and I started playing really well junior year. And then I got hurt um, in the sixth game of the season and tore my LCL and all that. And I think after that, it kind of like woke me up a little bit. I was like, okay, like I need to get back from this and focus because I have an opportunity. I don't just want to waste it. Well, and, and, uh, and, and I, we failed to mention your dad played at Wake Forest, correct? Yeah. Basketball, right? Yeah. ACC, man. <laughs> Did you so so? Did you ever have dreams of playing basketball in the ACC? Oh yeah, <laughs> growing up all the time, hanging around my dad and my mom. They big basketball fans, and I would always like be around them while they'd be hosting parties, watching games, March Madness, all that. Really, but like playing college basketball is really like what I would think of growing up. Like that's all I wanted to do. And, and you can you can say it. It's okay. You wanted to go to North Carolina, right? <laughs> <laughs> No, come on! I won't show it to him. I promise. I won't tell him. I won't tell him. Yeah, I was I was a big Indiana basketball fan. <laughs> That's mom. fine because mom went to Indiana, right? Yeah, Didn't mom go to? Is, okay, I'll I'll allow it. I've, been, I've I've probably been to, I don't even know how many Indiana basketball games. Like I would always just we would always watch and for with her I would always root for them. She'd give me the shirts, sweatshirts, all that. So that was really my team growing up. And that's I'll allow it. It's not in the ACC. And it's, you know, but if you were in the ACC, come on, between me and you, if you were in the ACC, what team would you pick? Uh, USC, the best one, for real. <laughs> That's my guy. <laughs> All right. I know I put you on the spot. You probably just got in trouble with Dad. You're going to get a text pretty soon. Like, what do you think? Not that he's going to see this, but. Uh, All right, man. So, now let's jump back. So, you, uh, you left early, right? You left. So, talk about that. Leaving school what mid-senior year what was that what was that about so um the coaches so after I'd committed in the summer to Minnesota the coaches had talked to me about like the coming early thing and at the time I didn't really know much about it whatever so I talked to like a few friends from other schools that were like the grade above me who went early and I asked like what the benefits were and everything like that and all I heard was good things so I, I had taken college classes uh, junior year of high school and that first semester of senior year. So I had, I was able to graduate, finished all my high school credits. So the plan was I would go in January and then you'd get ahead academically and athletically. So I went early, came here in January, started that semester of college. And then we also, I was like thrown right into the winter workouts. So we did winter conditioning, lifting and all that with the team. And then we got to a little bit of spring ball before the whole pandemic happened. So I think honestly that put me ahead of a lot of people, not only on our team, but like across the country. And I think it really just like 
helped me because I haven't always been the like football focused. I haven't always done like football drills and things like that. So coming early kind of got me used to like the whole like college football full time thing. And I think that like gave me an opportunity to actually get on the field. Wow. And what was it like your first time on campus? Were you just, I mean, so you're only a junior in high school. Is that right? When, when, or, or senior? Yeah. Senior. Senior. What's that like, man? You're, you're a year like removed from most people when they make that. That's, that's a, that's a shocking moment for anybody. What's that like to be a year earlier? I mean, were you just blown away? It was, it was crazy. Like being 17 and being in college, I was like, wow, like all the classes, everything, like, even like when I would tell like professors and things like they would ask, you know, at the beginning, they ask all about like the students and I would tell them that I came early. I was 17, all that. And they'd be like, just blown away. Like we've never really seen somebody this young come into like any of our classes before. So it was, it was definitely a transition because, you know, everyone knows senior year of high school always isn't like the most academically focused year. Like you kind yeah. of worn out from all those years and then going right into freshman year of college where you really need to grind. It's a big transition. Yeah. And um, what, what, so let's talk physically. I mean, you know, you probably think in, in high school, you probably think, wow, this is the hardest work I've ever done. I got to imagine stepping into a big 10 school, man. What's that like? It's wow. It's different because like in high school, yeah, as you said, like the Davidson program is very tough and gritty and all that. So they're going to get the most out of you. So at those workouts, especially like with coach white and all that i would be it would i'd be tired man i'm like oh these are the hardest workouts ever and i come here and like it's not like so a lot of the day and stuff is how long it is as well as like how hard it is we'd have long practices here practice will be like two hours or like workout will be like two hours but it's like the hardest two hours that you've ever done like you it's non-stop fast 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 everything and you have to keep up with the tempo like you if you don't keep up you're gonna get lost so Wow. It's, it's a big difference. And how, how are you doing with balancing? Like, because I can't imagine that you got a lot of juice left to go to class. So our, our workouts in the morning and the afternoon and, and how are you balancing all that? I mean, it's, you know, again, you're, you're, you're a year before you should have been there. So how, how did that go with balancing that as a, as just as a student athlete, were you ready for that? Um, I think that with a lot of like what my parents have taught me growing up and things like that and going to Davidson and all of that, they've taught me a lot of good time management skills. I know before we left, they had talked about like staying on top of everything and all that. So I was really like focused on that when I first got here. And so in the springtime and in the winter, the workouts were after class. So you would go to class in the morning and then like you'd have practice later. So I think that made it kind of easy first getting there because I'd go to class. It wouldn't be too much stress on me. And then I'd get to the workout and like get ready for that. I just shifted to the football gear of things. But then now, like in the summer, um, well, in the summer we didn't have classes, but right now we have like practices in the mornings and then classes afterwards. So I think that's a little bit different for me at least. You, you're tucking in about nine o'clock, aren't you? <laughs> no, you're not. Come on. <laughs> Come on, Gage. You're not talking. <laughs> you're in college. No, I got to imagine that, that man – you know, those, that there's probably not much left in the tank after after a day of workouts and then class and everything else and then studying. I can't imagine there's much left. Yeah. No, nah, it's yeah. You'll find yourself very exhausted. You'll be laying in bed like, damn, like, I got to get up in like seven hours. Like I got better go to bed. So what's what's the housing situation like? Are you rooming with other football guys or are you? Uh, yeah. Yep. So I have. Yeah, we're in a four by four apartment right now. So it's like four of us, four bedrooms, four bathrooms. And I'm with all other freshmen too. And so, yeah, it's been, it's been good though. It's really nice around here. That's awesome. And now, now you had a lot of D1 offers, if I remember right. Um, yeah. What, and if, again, this might be one of those past questions, but what, what was it that said, I'm going to Minnesota? Like, was there, there, was there a moment or what was it? There was a moment. So in the summer, so there's like official visits the year before you like, or whenever before you commit. And a lot of the official visits, like the goal is like, it's like you get the experience of going to the school. So like they'll take you through like a normal visit where you do like visit academics, visit the facilities, do all of that. But then the official visit, like they pay for everything. So like they put you in a nice hotel, feed you all those nice food and stuff, take you to places around campus. And then you get to like spend like the nighttime, like after they're done with you, you go with like a host with who's on the team and they'll like 
take you to do whatever and like show you around campus and just like get get the feel of like what it's like to go there and so in the summer before I committed I was I went on three of them so I went to Cincinnati first uh, Indiana and then Minnesota and I was going to like my original plan was I'm going to commit after senior year because like I've been injured most of my high school career for football so I was like I'm going to like put some good tape out and then I can see like I could go to wherever basically at that point I believed in myself I could go anywhere so I'm thinking like yeah I'm going to do it after senior year and I'm going to like I'll take these visits now and do some later but then I got to the Minnesota official visit and just like seeing everything again I've been there once before but I like seeing everything again I was like okay I really like it and then just talking to coach Fleck we were in a meeting with him actually and he was just talking about the culture and like why it's a life program it's not a football program like they're really aiming to make us better young men above all like the football stuff comes with it and obviously the winning comes with it and the football all that comes with it but really it's about like becoming the best person you can be and so like all that and then just his whole presentation I was like there's nowhere else I need to be at least like personally for myself there's nowhere else I need to be like and so I sat down with them and I talked to him and then the night after like after that like meeting or whatever and after I talked to him that night I was just sitting in my hotel room I was like I went into my dad's room I remember I was like yeah I'm gonna commit here like and me and my mom <laughs> about it earlier so we all talked about it and I was like all right I'm gonna call him so then I called him real late and just told him that I was committing and then he was really happy about that and it's been great ever since yeah he's a heck of a coach man I mean you you know the Big Ten is no joke you know, obviously there's Ohio State. There, there's the big dogs. It's almost like the ACC where you got Duke and Carolina and then the rest, you know. And I've always wondered what it was like to coach when you know those two guys, the Ohio States, and Michigan, you know, they're always going to be at the top. It's tough to take over a program, but that guy's doing stuff right. I mean, you know, he's – I'm not a big college football guy, but uh, I know enough to know that there's a, there's a guy that knows what he's doing. I mean, I agree with you. I think anytime I see that guy, I want to run through a brick wall for whatever it was he said. Uh, and that's just social media stuff. You know, he's, he's doing things right. And I, I think, I think Minnesota is going to be, you know, going to be special. Personally, I'd love to go see a game in the barn, um, oh, yeah. <laughs> the hoop area. Like yeah. when, when I, first night that I was here, when I first got on campus, I went to a game. It is so cool there. Like the court is like elevated from where the bench. It's so nice. Like it feels like the stands are right on top of it. Like it was so fun. They were playing Penn State. It was a good game. Yeah, you know, it's an electric atmosphere. You got the little Patino running around, <laughs> the Patino Jr. So yeah, I, you know, I, I, man, I'm, I'm just happy. Fit is everything, and I, you'll, I, I, I say this consistently on every podcast that I have with anybody that that has that kind of conversation. Fits everything, and if you found the fit, then man, you're good because you found out, and we'll, we'll talk about this in one more second. So, you know, you found we, we all found out that it can be taken away in a minute. You know, like Austin lost baseball last year, um, gone, couldn't play. And so, you know, but he still had to go to college. You know, he still had to be in the university that he's at. So fit is everything, whether it's an injury or a pandemic or whatever it might be, man, you want to be where you want to be. And it sounds like you really found that home. And that's that's awesome because you see so many transfers, you know, people just follow whatever. And uh, I love that you found a home that you sound really, really happy in. So, um Last thing, and this may be, again, this might be one of those um, past areas. What was it like with the pandemic? I mean, you, you know, we're all, we're all learning as we go. What was it like to, to just, I mean, what was the last few weeks like for you guys? Because it was we're on, we're off, then we're on again. You know? yeah, so during the summer, whenever, like, it, it happened in spring, so, like, the pandemic was announced, whatever, and we went into that long quarantine period. And the coaches were sending us workouts, and we were doing the workouts, you know. And then, like, eventually they said, like, oh, like, you can come back to campus. We have, like, all these protocols. Like, we're going to start workouts because camp's coming up. And so we did that. We are all working out, masks on, all that, sanitizing every rack and everything after in between and just keeping up with all the protocols. And then we get into, like, fall camp, basically. And then so we're, we're like, a week. We did a week of fall camp, and then they said the season was canceled. So we're like, oh, like, what do we do now? And then, like, the coaches did a really good job of responding fast and letting us know exactly what was going to go on. So then, like, a day or two later, we got, like, our new schedule, and they updated everything and, like, followed all those Big Ten rules of, like, what we can and can't do. And I think it's been really good since then. And, like, we've done a really good job So since, like, the pandemic is, like, 
a thing or whatever. And like, so only a certain amount of people can practice on the field at one time. And usually our practices, like, it'll be like everyone out there. But so like, up, like the last month we've been doing so some people are inside and some people are outside which gets all the young guys like more reps and stuff like that so we've gotten a lot more reps than you'd get in a normal off season which has been very helpful at least for me and I know for like a lot of my other freshman friends like on the team and I know that we all really appreciate that so I think the school has been doing a really good job of just like keeping us ready to play and everything well you got like what three weeks yep what what schedule do you guys play Ohio State? I didn't I don't I didn't look at the schedule. We don't play in the regular season. Um, okay. but we have Michigan first games. <laughs> okay. So um what do you what do you feel what are your chances you think you'll play? Um I think there's I think there's a chance I can play. I think I've definitely worked hard and it just all depends on like this like time leading up into like game week, just like how I practice and all of that and like just keeping keep grinding and everything, but I think there's a chance for sure. What position are you going to play? Uh, defensive end, five techniques. So, yeah, it'll be almost the same as high school. Well, and shout out to our guy Bunyak, right? Because I'm uh, pretty sure my wife and I, I'm old now, so I don't work out. The, the workout is hard for me, so we do the old person walk thing. And every time I walk by his house in our neighborhood, I'm pretty sure I saw your car there. So yep. you guys were getting after it, even during the pandemic and the summer and uh, – you guys were getting after it. I, I mean, for, as as far as I know, your car was there, so I assumed you were. You guys were getting after it. So shout out to our boy Bunyak, right? That was, yeah, that was probably the best thing for me. Him, like, he is one of my best friends, and he like always keeps me focused when I don't want to be. Like sometimes, like you know, everyone has those moments where like, uh, like pandemic, you know, like working out, whatever. He kept me and my um, our other friend Chris Mayfield at that was from Bradley going to Michigan yep. State. Us three, we worked out every single day of the pandemic. We did all the workouts and we kept pushing each other. And I think that's the most important thing when you have like your peers pushing, like you pushing your friends and everything that just gets you so much better. And I think honestly, like that period of quarantine is really what like got me to where I am as far as like how I've been practicing now and like how I'm like physically able to play. Like I'm big enough and strong enough to be in the game. So I think that was a really big piece of this whole puzzle that's, you know, this freshman year man we're, we're so proud of you um as a community as hilliard we're proud of you and um so what the last question is if you had advice for that high school freshman that that eighth grader that seventh grader that kid in aeu uh the kid that's a sophomore what's the best advice you have basketball and football what's the best advice you have where you are today what have you learned I think that honestly, it just comes down to hard work and how much like what you want to get out of it. Some people play sports just to like, just to play, just to be on the team, things like that. But if you really want to set yourself apart and like be one of those key players and like do it, be, maximize your potential. I think you just got to work hard every day and wake up every day knowing like I have this goal. Like you can't just, oh, I want to have this goal when we have team practice. Oh, I'm going to have this goal when it's time for tryouts because that's when it's too late. Like you have to put in work when nobody else is watching that's when you really get better the work that people see is the work that like it's expected so like every everything that you do on your own those add up and you won't see the add up until it happens but when it happens you'll be able to look back and be like oh this is why i'm where i'm at because of all those long nights those early mornings all that man that that's awesome you, you're wise beyond your years and uh and again we're real proud of you and thank you for coming on and spending a little bit of time. Hopefully I didn't do anything to get you guys in, in a violation. <laughs> Are mom and dad going to be able to, to watch any, or to, to come to any games? Have you heard? They haven't really said much to us about like any fans or anything yet, but as soon as they like let us know if like, if we're allowed to have family or whatever, I'll definitely be letting them know. And I know they're going to make an effort to get to any game they can if they're allowed. So that'll be exciting. I know they're going to dial up the Big Ten Network, as, as am I. I guarantee you the guys from the 2018-2019 team will be doing the same because, you know, you guys are family. And uh, even that extends to the parents of that team. You all are family, and, and I'm going to cheer you on as long as you play. I, you know, I hope it's in the NFL. I hope it's NFL and NBA, man. I, I hope you just reach all your dreams. And um, I, I, you don't have any idea how much I appreciate you coming on you know, college, college guys don't need to come on this thing, but you did. And, and uh, I appreciate you. I'm proud of you. I'm really, really proud of you. And I can't wait to see you just dominate the big 10. 
And do me a favor, beat that team, Ohio State. Oh, I got you. <laughs> That's a goal for sure. Nobody, I'll, 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 nobody heard us. It's just me and you. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, man. I'll, I'll be cheering as hard for you that day as anybody else. Um, you know, and I appreciate you, man. If you ever need anything that I can help you with, you know how to get a hold of me. And, and uh, man, I just, I wish you the best of luck. Thanks so much, Gage. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yep. Anytime. All right, man. Talk soon. Yep. I'll see you soon. Thank you. All right.